Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Anthony with Apex, I'm back again with another video today. We're gonna go over the TikTok Honda engine that I've been doing a lot of different videos on and showing you guys basically what happens to these engines or the most common issues you're gonna find with these engines. And today we're gonna to be busting this thing apart to show you guys what happens when you don't run an air filter, when you run the thing low on oil, and you know, basically when you just neglect your machine and not take care of it. So I'm gonna be showing you guys the damages that have been done to this engine here. So make sure you're subscribed down below to see more content like this. Make sure you're following the TikTok channel as well, where I post a lot of the more short form content and let's get started. All right, so now we got the engine here and we're gonna start breaking this thing down. So like I said, if you wanna see the cause of failure, this one here is the valve basically ate through the head and I'm gonna break it open and show you guys how that happened or what happens to it whenever the dirt goes into the intake. So let's just start breaking this thing apart and pulling off the top end or the head in this case and show you guys. So I'm gonna glove up here and let's get started. All right, so first things first, let's get this recoil starter off. You can leave it on with the shroud, but I like to remove it just because I can reuse this for another job. We'll set that to the side. Next, we're gonna remove this dipstick here or the dipstick tube anyways. So I like to remove the screw and then put it back in what, because I'm gonna be turning this, I might be turning this machine over, but there's a screw also on the back side here as well. Looks like that's already been loose. And then we'll remove this front screw here. Wow, these are like already loose, like someone's already been in this thing. And then on the side over here, you don't have to remove that one. That should be, it's basically slotted. So now you have a nice shroud there that I could potentially sell as well. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and remove our carburetor here because the governor linkage and everything is attached to the head. Okay, so I'll just leave that to the side for now. Get these linkages off here. Let me grab a set of pliers. And then how I remove these, it looks like someone's screwed in this idle stop screw a little bit, but I'll back that out a little bit. We will remove that dude right there. And then we will unhook the governor spring. And how I remove the choke lever is I like to bend the arm, but first you wanna do is remove the fuel line from it to make it easier. So go ahead and close that off. Just be nice and easy with it. You don't want to break this fuel. You don't want to break the fuel line anyways. But what I like to do again is I like to bend the arm here to where you can really uh, be able to twist off. So I like to twist it around like that. So when I slide this out, it will just come out of this hole like that. So I'm actually, I normally do this from the front but since I'm showing you guys, I'm doing it from, or I normally do it from this side here, but since I'm showing y'all, it's actually kind of awkward for me. Uh, we can leave the muffler on, it's just fine. We can leave the coil on, and we're gonna go ahead and take this valve cover off here. This thing already has no oil, so before you take this off, make sure there's no oil in it. Okay, so now we're gonna take the head off here and we'll go ahead and bust these, I believe they're 12 millimeter um, bolts out of there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and knock these out. There's two on the inside, and then there's two on the outside here. Okay, and then we are going to just basically wiggle this thing off of here, and as you can see, it just slides right off. 
Okay, so let me bring y'all in for a closer look here. All right, so we're getting the push rods out of it and these are nice and good, but let me show you guys what happens here. So as you can see, there is a ton of carbon buildup on this thing. So you can see, I can literally just flake that off. And what this does, all this carbon right here is what builds up and that is what scratches the sides of your cylinder wall. So that's why it's important that you make sure you're changing them air filters, changing them fuel filters. You're not allowing dirt inside the engine because what it does is it builds up all this carbon in here and it makes your valves, basically this carbon turns into like, I mean, if you feel this, it literally, it sounds like sandpaper. So you have to think about that as a lubricating property or something that is, these valves are going up and down super fast and they're just going to chew their way through the valve seats. It's going to damage your cylinder wall inside your engine. It just causes so much havoc. And as you can see here, so these valves, let me turn at an angle here to see, maybe you can see a little bit better, but you can see this intake valve or this top valve right here. Look how far down it is inside the head and look how more flush that exhaust valve is. That tells me that this intake valve was being chewed up bad. So what's happened is dirt is going inside the carburetor right here and it is just, it's entering through here first. So it's going to be chewing up this valve first and then going into the engine and chewing up everything else as well. So this is why it's important to change them air filters to keep them nice and clean and to make sure that your engine is not becoming dirt ingested because let me show you guys the damage that it caused. So when I go to remove this valve, let me pop, pop off this seat here. So I just took off the valve spring right there, as you can see, set that to the side. I'm gonna push this valve out. And as you can see, this valve is super sharp. So what I mean by that is the valve is supposed to be a nice, a nice flat face here. And you can see it literally chewed its way through it. So what has happened now is now this piece, this edge right here has become super sharp. So I'm not sure if you can see that on camera very well, but I just want to show you guys that this valve seat, this valve is what's caused the machine not to run because now this can't have a closing surface. So it's going to constantly leak air. So when it comes on that compression stroke, you're going to get some blow by on this valve and it's not going to build enough pressure. And this is your outcome. So, so what I would say, if your machine is about a year, maybe two years at the max, I would definitely rebuild the head. But if you're getting over two years, even two years is pushing it. You have to think about that. If the machine was neglected like this, it was probably neglected most of its life. So you have to think about it, all the damage that it's caused to the bottom end or the engine block. And what I mean by that, like the dirt getting into the crankcase, getting into the oil, damaging internal bearings on the engine. But not only that, also scoring the cylinder wall, causing some blow by on the cylinder wall by the pistons and piston rings. So if your machine is not that old, then obviously it's a no brainer because it's only been causing damage for a short amount of time. So the odds of the whole engine block and cylinder wall being damaged, it's a lot more slim. So in this case, you, you can't just resurface the valves and put a new valve in it. And you can't just resurface the valve seat and put a new valve in it. You just want to replace the whole head with new valves. What I would do is you can reuse everything else like the studs, you can reuse the muffler and everything. The head gasket, you would want to replace, always replace gaskets when you're Un undoing parts from engines, it's it's well worth it. And it's just their head gaskets are also very cheap anyway. So it's, it's a no brainer to replace that. But you can reuse the valve springs, the rocker arms, the push rods, literally everything. Just replace the head and both valves. Don't do one, do both. And if you want me to do a video on that in doing a head rebuild or a top end rebuild, comment below, make sure you like the video. If I get enough comments and everything to where it can offset the cost, of rebuilding a head, I will, but it's 
pretty much not too complicated to do. You're already there. So it's basically transferring everything from here to a new head with new valves. And it's very straightforward. You saw me break this apart within, yeah, I think it took me five minutes to break it apart. If you want me to do a video on that, like I said, make sure you like the video and hopefully this helps someone and lets you get a feel for what happens or makes, makes you see exactly what happens because I tell my customers this all the time. I'm like, just replace the engine, which this customer did because it was worth it on their machine because their transmission was working, maybe their Everything with the deck was in good shape. Everything was in good shape. So I was able to get them to swap out the engine. And then I took their old engine. They didn't want it. So, and it makes, it lets me do a video, but it gives my customers a way of seeing what happens to an engine and understand why we replace the engine rather than rebuilding. Or why don't you just throw a new valve in it and call it a day? Well, it's not that easy. So with all that said, hopefully this video helped you. If it did, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed if you got the guts. And that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you guys for watching and we'll catch you guys next time.